Hello everybody, this is the Week Strength. 2018 was a very very busy year for Kevin Feige and his uh, money-grubbing cronies in their effort to make all the money. They released Black Panther which got some enormously good press and made all the money. They released of course uh, Avengers Infinity War which made even more of all that money. But they also released one more movie which I felt actually was the second best of them. Ant-Man and the Wasp. I was not a huge fan of the original Ant-Man. I thought it was pretty okay but it lacked something. They were able to turn me around completely when it comes to this one. I think this is low-key one of my favorite Marvel movies. I think this is one of the most rewatchable Marvel movies of the entire bunch. Let's find out why, shall we? This is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Since the event of Civil War, uh, Paul Rudd aka Ant-Man aka Scott Lang has been under house arrest and has, you know, created all of these fantastic slides for his daughter and stuff like that and, you know, things are going kind of okay for him and in, in just three days he's gonna be a free man and he's off the hook and stuff like that. Unfortunately for him he's kind of being sort of kidnapped by Hope and Hank Pym. The thing is that um, uh, they want him to help them rescue Hank Pym's wife from the Quantum Zone. In the first movie, uh, Ant-Man was able to return again from the Quantum Zone when he, you know, came there. Uh, and they think that if he could survive in the Quantum Zone and come back, maybe they can do the same thing for his wife, played by uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, by the way. We, we see the, you know, beginning of the movie where, you know, she entered the Quantum Zone to, you know, stop some missiles and stuff like that. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot about it. Hope is now with the Wasp and has a uh, sort of suit with wings and stuff like that and it's kind of fun. The thing is that um, they're running into some troubles because there is this shape-shifting, uh, almost um, translucent mysterious figure who is some kind of a ghost that is trying to stop them. We also have Walton Goggins who is a you know kind of car salesman type of a villain who wants to you know get um, get his hands on you know the the PIM particles and the PIM equipment and stuff like that uh, for reasons that will remain sort of unclear sort of. It should also be mentioned that Hank PIM is on the run from the authorities and that he kind of blames Scott for it and the tension between them, you know, might create some problems later. We shall see how, about that. Are they going to be able to do it? Are they going to be able to save, you know, Hank Pym's wife? One of the reasons I really like this movie is the fact that there is so little at stake here. There is no, you know, invading force from beyond, you know, the vortex or there isn't some god who has, you know, come down to earth to wreck some shit. They're going to save Hank Pym's wife. That's it. I think that that gives the movie oddly higher stakes because we're focusing more on one thing, not, you know, the survival of the entire planet. I refer to you to the original Batman movie in which it is basically a quarrel over who is the most silliest of, you know, Batman and the Joker and it created arguably the greatest comic book movie of all time. However, uh, we're getting sidetracked. There are a number of reasons why I think this movie is absolute top of the line when it comes to comic book movies. The first thing is the characters. We have just so many likable characters and we have so many you know, nice characters in this one. Scott Lang is just so damn likable and Paul Rudd did such an amazing job with him. It is very difficult not to you know, enjoy his company. And we also have these fantastic sequences where you know, they're playing around with, with size of things. They're shrinking things, they're you know, enhancing things, they're making stuff you know, huge and enormous or very, very small. And it is very funny and it's very creative and it creates some very, very cool action sequences, especially in the end, which somehow makes this movie more epic than most other Marvel movies in some weird way. 
by being small at the same time. I, I don't know quite how they did it, but it was just a movie that was sort of tailor-made for me in that sense. Uh, essentially, they took the things I liked most about Ant-Man and they enhanced it. They took the things I did not like that much about um, the first Ant-Man movie and they diminished it. In the process they created a very entertaining, very hilarious, incredibly funny uh, comic book movies with a lot of you know small little side characters that all have a part to play. One of the few things I really really have to complain about however is the fucking villains. When you, because when you discover what Ava, aka the ghost thing, uh, you know, her backstory and stuff like that, you're, you're discovering, oh, I know exactly where this one is going. And if I know where something is going in a movie, then you've got some problems. And also, I never really you know, bought into Walton Goggins as this super villain or stuff like that. He felt like he was a bit shoehorned in just so they would have, you know, um, another villain to play around with. He's very hilarious. He's very entertaining. I love Walton Goggins. However, he has not got that much screen time. Jesus, where have that happened before? Oh, I don't know all the Marvel movies, I guess. But, um, in the grand scheme of things, it, it isn't too bad because I'm being so entertained by, by Louise played by Michael Peña and, you know, the ex-con security that he's, you know, running these days and, you know, they have a small little story arc too as well and it is just very, very hilarious. And I always appreciate when a Marvel movie can clock in in under two hours. That's great. And also, apart from Thor Ragnarok, this is the funniest movie in the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, hands down. If you are on the lookout for an entertaining, explosive and creative comic book movie, look no further. And it is also very refreshing not to have two CGI you know, main characters with basically the same powers fighting in a CGI environment. I've seen that a lot and it is so refreshing to have you know, something different. The movie has a nice pace and has some pretty nice twists and turns and also it has a pretty pretty fucking awesome mid you know uh, post credit sequence in this movie one of the best ones in the entirety of uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe in my opinion. The movie has some minor issues especially with the villains and stuff like that but by and large this is an almost flawless comic book movie and uh, I love those. A great story, lots of creativity, great action, pretty good acting and a couple of really hilarious sequences gives this movie easily 87 points. It's a really good Marvel movie and the payoff to some of the jokes that they're doing is absolutely hilarious. I love the truth serum thing. That was great. And there are some twists and turns also in this one which I felt was very very nicely done and I didn't see them coming. And also we have a pretty impressive list of great actors in this one so I, I have really really little things to complain about. Except the villains, of course. So we'll see you next time from well, so and so reviewing well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.